Well, good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner on this, uh, well, I'll, I'll call it a, a chilly Saturday morning, but uh, a bright, sunshiny day. I was noticing that the weather is going to warm up very nicely, so uh, it looks like a good weekend to get out there, get a few projects done, and, uh, and get ready for fall. Speaking of fall, of course, the fall sports are well underway now, and the Bronco football team played the Aiken Gobblers for the first time in 13 years last night at uh, Sports Stadium, and for the first time ever in the regular season. The game was scoreless after a quarter, and the Broncos were able to create a fumble one play after being stopped right at the goal line. Taylor Wilson just about pushed it in. They get the turnover. Two plays later, Junior Armando Barrios goes in from three yards out, and the Falls led six to nothing with under five minutes to play in the first half. The Gobblers get on the board in the third quarter as they block the punt out of the back of the end zone for a safety to make it 6-2. to two. And then the game really went into the hands of the Aiken quarterback, Owen Miller. Uh, he would score from 17 yards out late in the third quarter, and he'd throw a 10-yard touchdown pass midway through the fourth quarter for the final margin of 15-6 to six in favor of Aiken. The Broncos fall to 0-3 on the season. The Gobblers even up their record at 1-1. One and, one. and it's one of those games, statistically, that you look at uh, the yards and you say, uh, how did the Broncos lose. They outrushed Green, uh, excuse me, outrushed the uh, Gobblers 153 to 89. They outpassed them 27 to 15. So total yards in the game by my count unofficially from last night. The Broncos 180, Aiken 104 yards, but the Broncos are going to lose 15 to 6 and most of that has to do with a couple of uh, Turnovers, one a really crucial one, and uh, a couple of block punts as well. Obviously, the one being the safety. Uh, individually, last night for the uh, Broncos, Garrett Koenig had nine carries for 59 yards. Taylor Wilson had 14 carries for 52 yards. He also had those 27 yards passing. The Little Fork Big Falls Vikings played their second consecutive home game to open the season on Friday night as they hosted Kelly or North Home. The Mustangs would build a 38-0 lead uh, in the middle of the second quarter before freshman Jacob Pendergast would return a kickoff 70 yards for a touchdown. However, that would be the only score for the Vikings in the game as they lose to Kelly or North Home by a final score of 60 to eight. Other scores from uh, around the area last night in football. Grand Rapids uh, evens their record at 1-1 one one with a 27-6 win over Hibbing. Colke was up 42 to nothing with three minutes left in the uh, first half over Duluth Denfeld. That's the final score that Colke really backed off and uh, kept that uh, the way they probably should have done. North Branch not saying an upset, but I was a little bit surprised the fact that they beat Hermantown 42-28 last night. Those games in Section 7-4A and games involving teams out of Section 7-3A. Proctor, who the Broncos lost to last week, lose to Duluth East 19-6. Esco, biggest surprise of the uh, scores last night for me. Two Harbors get shut out at home. Esco beats them 7 to nothing on a late touchdown with under five minutes remaining. Moose Lake Willow River, who the Broncos play next week, will be on the road with that game uh, down in Willow River. They down Virginia, who was undefeated 26 to 20. Uh, GNK gets their first win of the season as they beat uh, Pine City 18 to 12. In Section 7, 2A Hinkley Finlayson 7 to nothing over Masabi East. Everett Gilbert, I, I saw two different scores. I saw 22 to 6 and I saw 16 to 0. I, I don't know which one to believe, but Everett Gilbert does beat Chisholm as they even their record at 1 and 1. Deer River uh, loses their first game of the year as they lose to East Central 26 to 14. In uh, nine man football, Cook County scored 78 last week. They get 56 more this week. That's a pretty good way to start the season as they beat Silver Bay 56-8. to Cromwell, another big win. They beat Big Fork 54-6 to as they moved to 2-0. and I think I saw some place this morning ranked third in the state. Looks like they've got another uh, juggernaut there. Uh, uh, Ely moves to 2-0 and with a 46-0 win over Northeast Range. Northwoods had to come back, but they do uh, beat MIB handily 49-22. to In three other nine-man games, Floodwood shuts out Hill City Northland 46 to nothing. Renshaw, who's come to town to uh, Little Fork Big Falls in, a, in three weeks. They shot out Carlton 64 to nothing. Carlton beat the uh, Vikings last week 28 to nothing and Renshaw beats them 64 to nothing which was a very big surprise to me and Southridge shuts out Lake of the Woods 62 to nothing. One other note from uh, high school football last night. A, a player for New Alm 6 TD receptions in a game last night uh, to state, set, excuse me to set a state record. That's a, that's that's a pretty good night uh, if you catch even if you just catch six footballs, uh, much less catch six touchdown passes. 
Oregon Santana picked up his American League leading 15th win on the hill, and Eddie Rosario went two for four with four RBIs, including his 21st home run of the season as the Twins won their third straight game. Uh, this time, the second one straight one over the Kansas City Royals by a score of eight to five. The Twins scored in each of the first four innings and then got two runs late in the eighth inning to seal the win. Eduardo Escobar three for five with a home run and three runs scored. Brian Dozier and Robbie Grossman each had a pair of hits. The Twins are now a game and a half behind the Yankees for the top wild card spot, but the uh, Twins now lead the Angels by two games. So uh, right now, if the season ended today, there's still three weeks and a, and a day left in the uh, season. The Twins would be in the playoffs. The same two teams tonight in Kansas City as 12-7. and seven, Jose Barreos goes to the mound for the Twins. Pre-game at 5.30, first pitch at 6.15. On your home for the Minnesota Twins, K104. Gopher Volleyball last night, the number one ranked Gopher Volleyball team. They were four last week, move up to one this week. And they uh, go down to Texas, win a couple of matches on Thursday. And then they take on number five Texas last night. And uh, they win it in four sets. So the Gophers are now 8-0. and on the season. What's happening around the area today? Well, the uh, International Falls Bronco Volleyball team, they're down in Coleraine for a nine-team tournament. They're going to break it up into three uh, three pools of three. They're going to play a couple matches. They play Cherry at 1045. They play Ely at noon, and then they'll get to two more matches uh, with teams to yet to be determined uh, as they go along during the day. So they'll get four matches, best of three sets there. And kind of interestingly, the uh, Broncos will play Ely at noon today. Then they host them at home on Monday night. It ought to be a uh, ought to be a good match there. Got a chance to watch Ely at uh, Little Fork on Tuesday night, and uh, the Little Fork Big Falls Vikings volleyball team will be our guest here in a few minutes. So uh, we'll have a chance to talk a little bit more about Ely and uh, and about their other match against Big Fork uh, that occurred on Thursday night. The Rainy River volleyball team is down in the cities at Anoka Ramsey for a trio of matches. They're already underway against Dakota County. They'll also take on the Bethel JV team, and they'll take on the host Anoka Ramsey. During in the day. Rainy River baseball team, yes, I'm talking baseball. They're going to be at home today at noon at Sheila Field. They'll have their alumni game, so you get a chance to go out and watch some former uh, Rainy River players take on the uh, new bunch that uh, Coach Josh Keening has brought into uh, into Rainy River for next spring's schedule. The Minnesota United uh, soccer team, they host Philadelphia tonight at 7 o'clock at TCF. The Gopher football team travels out west. They play Oregon State at 9 o'clock. I hope I can make it that far. 9 o'clock, that game is on FS1. In uh, local college games, uh, UMD is at Upper Iowa at 1 o'clock. Uh, Bemidji State, they host Concordia St. Paul at 4 o'clock. St. Cloud is hosting Winona at 6. North Dakota State, the, uh, the Bison, they are at Eastern Washington. That'll be a dandy battle at 3 o'clock. North Dakota, they take on Missouri State out of uh, Fulton, uh, Missouri at 4 o'clock. Some top 25 matchups today. Early in the season, there's four of them today, and there's some there's some good ones. Stanford is at USC in a Pac-12 matchup. Georgia is at number 24, Notre Dame, which kind of surprised me considering the season Notre Dame had last year. The Battle of the Tigers, 13th ranked Auburn at number three, Clemson. Ought to be a dandy, but the game of the day has to be Oklahoma at Ohio State. Number five, Oklahoma at number two, Ohio State. That definitely has to have the attention of everybody. Of course, the Twins wrap up their uh, series at Kansas City tomorrow with a 110 game that can be heard on K104. NFL season got started on Thursday night. A lot of the games tomorrow, of course, two Monday night games, including the uh, Vikings. That game gets started uh, just after 6 o'clock. Pre-game will start at 5 o'clock on K104 on Monday night. Former Broncos uh, taking to the field in, uh, at the college ranks uh, this week. Uh, Sidney Rabwein uh, with the UND cross-country team. They're off this, uh, this weekend. Taylor Hebner, she's running for UMD. She took 50th place last night in the uh, 4K race for UMD as the uh, UMD team took second. Lexi Erickson uh, at St. Kate's. She's going to run her first collegiate meet today at River Falls at 11.30 a.m. Brady Wright, he's out in Crookston playing golf. They've got a meet coming up on Monday and Tuesday at Bemidji State. Brandon Barris, he was uh, he's were playing football with uh, Minnesota Morris. They lost to Martin Luther last week, 14 to seven, and they will be at Westminster College uh, today to take them on. Maddie Filipiak, she's down at Bemidji State. She had a couple of matches yesterday. They lose to. Uh, Michigan Tech in three sets. They sweep Wisconsin Parkside, and uh, Maddie had seven kills combined in those two matches. A couple more matches for Bemidji State as they take on Lake Superior State and Northern Michigan. And of course, uh, two more volleyball players, Isabella Edested, Isabella Edested, excuse me, and Clara Palm. They are playing for Rainy River. They got a nice 3-0 sweep over Fond du Lac 
on Wednesday night. And again, they are at Anoka Ramsey today. We're going to take a break and we'll come back with more Coach's Corner. You're listening live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Well, welcome back to Hardy's for our second segment in the uh, arm wrestle the contest occurred with thumb wrestling. Maybe that's what it was uh, between the guests on deciding who was going to come on first here in uh, uh, the Little Fork Big Falls Vikings volleyball team. They uh, won the thumb wrestling and uh, they are, uh, are here right now. Head coach Kim Wimmer and joined by senior Emily Fra Senior? Senior, I, 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 I should remember that from the other night. Danica Clemenson and uh, Emily Franz joining me here. And uh, Coach, uh, start of the season here, let's see, one and three, right? Uh, I'm together, we are. Uh, one and three? Talk about the start of the season. Positives, where, where, where do you see them at? Um, I think some positives, uh, we're improving every match we're playing in, which is what you want to see at this time in the season. Um, we have 12 kids, all 12 can play volleyball, all 12 can go out there and contribute, and so that's kind of fun to have, and people have been plugged in in different spots and contributed well, so I'm happy with that. Um, had a fun game on Thursday against Big Fork, and... Um, <coughs> is happy with different we had a huge comeback game two which you don't really see a comeback like that very often in volleyball we fell a little bit short and and we haven't been getting the wins in the win column but I'm happy with our progress and I think as the season goes on we'll we'll see the wins come and we'll we'll keep improving and going from there Emily you're shaking your head you want to add to what uh, coach is saying about that the, the, the positive things that you see um yeah basically just what Kim said we're really improving every game and I can tell in practice is we're improving as well. I think for the most part we have pretty good chemistry which really helps for a volleyball team. Um, Kim also said that all 12 of us can play which is very nice because if one girl's struggling we can just throw in another girl and we're good to go. Danica? You gotta g give me two cents on that. Wait, wait. Um, well we play very well together. Um, it's more of a mental thing when it comes to the game we just sometimes can't get ourselves in the game <laughs> and that's always been a struggle for us but overall we do play good together okay let's go back to uh, Tuesday night the match against uh, Ely at home coach it was one of those matches that just seemed to I, I, I don't know it, it just it, there was snowball and there, there were major runs uh, in the game eight nine ten points for one team or another can, can, you, exp can you explain <laughs> why that happens <laughs> I can't. Um, I was, well, what, you, we talked about positives. One thing that we definitely need to work on is our game one. Um, our uh, game one of, of all the matches we've played, we've really struggled game one. So we talked about it a little bit after Big Fork, and we, we just need to be really focused and ready to go game one. So hopefully we can start out with the momentum. We're not digging ourselves out of a hole and, and giving the other team all kinds of momentum right off the bat. So Monday night you're going to run down to the old gym and put up the net quick, get the 7th and 8th graders out of the way, and, and maybe play a and get, and get things, get, Not a bad idea. Get, get things going, and uh, <coughs> Emily, you're, you're 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 the middle hitter. You're the middle blocker. Which one's more fun, the, the the hitting, the kill, or the block? Which 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 one's more fun? Which one's more rewarding? I, I would say the block. Um, it's more common to see a kill than a block for me, anyways. Sure. So I feel like. As a middle blocker, getting blocked is a lot more rewarding and exciting. It is, how do I say this? Is it, uh, it's more rewarding, is it tougher to get a block than it is to get a kill? Ah, uh, for me, yeah. <laughs> um, for a long time I had a really bad habit of swinging my arms when I went up to block, which really screwed up my timing, but I've uh, I fixed that, and yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I fixed that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I fixed that. There, there, hopefully you haven't jinxed yourself yeah, like right. that. Uh, Danica, coach has been asking you to play a little setter, play a little hitter. Which one? Um. Which one's better? Which one would you prefer? At first, I, I didn't really enjoy setting, but I'm starting to like it more. It's more easier for me to just be stuck with setting, you know. Um. Yeah, I'm definitely growing on it and but coach, moving. But coach must see something in you that she wants to keep you maybe at a hitter as well. It, do you, you must enjoy that part of it as well? Yeah, I definitely do enjoy hitting. I like the reward after getting a kill and it's nice. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the toughest thing about 
becoming a setter, being the setter? What is what's the toughest thing for a person who never really got to play competitive volleyball other than, you know, out at the family reunion thing? <laughs> so, <laughs> for me, you know. But what, 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 what's the biggest challenge? Um, definitely trying to um, get to know your hitters and getting to know what height and, you know, just what they like and speed. And What's the easiest thing about being the setter? Um, you, I don't, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you kind of have multiple jobs. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, I, to me, I, as I look at it, and again, this is standing from the sideline, you know, usually when another other team serves, you hear that back row player, you know that, okay, I'm hitting the ball this way, but as a setter, you've got to run down that first pass, yeah. and then while you're running it down, you're trying to decide, where am I going with this? Is it going to be a back set? Is it going to be a quick set? Is it going to be, you know, where am I yeah. going with this? And to me, that is, that you're that middle, that middle person on the on the hit, and it really makes it tough to uh, yeah. tough to go. Coach, where where would where would you prefer to have her at? Where would you prefer to have Danica? Would you prefer to have her at the hitter or at the setter? What 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 would be the ideal situation? I'm not because we don't always get to play and coach in the ideal situation. But where where would where would you like to see her play? Well, I always I know Danica loves to hit, and um, so I like to see kids play where they want to be, and I know she has a lot of fun with that. With that being said, she's a very talented setter. She has great game sense out on the court, so she just has the ability to like you say track down that ball she can get there I know she can get there I have no question and she can find her find her hitters so um, selfishly from a coach's perspective I love her in that setter position she's touching the ball every single time the ball goes over the court for the most part and so if we can find ways to get her some swings too I, I that's great and, and I'm glad she's she loves that but but selfishly as a coach I I'm glad her. she's yes correct yeah you need her to be there Emily, talk about somebody on this uh, on this team uh, that has stepped forward this year. You, you've, been, you've been around for a long time. Who's who's a, who's a young girl that that has stepped forward and and maybe caught your eye and said, "Wow!" From the JV team to the varsity team this year, or maybe somebody who was on the varsity and yet maybe didn't get to play a lot last year. Somebody who's really stepped up. I would definitely say uh, the junior Megan Fairchild. She has really really improved over the past year. I've noticed. I know she worked really hard uh, this past summer. And I think she had a net set up in her backyard, and I know she was just swinging and working on her serves, and she does have a very good uh, swing. She also, I think it was her shoulder, she had something screwed up with, which is a bummer. But um, she's gotten put into game situations, and she's gotten blocks and kills, and she's doing really, really well. Danica, you shake your head. Who else? Who? Maybe another person that's kind of stepped up. Um, definitely Emily Fairchild and Trin, Trinity Porter. Um, they both came from JV this this year, and um, yeah, Trinity Porter's really stepped up passing, and Emily Fairchild's a great hitter, and I think they both have helped the team very much this year. This Monday, you guys got Lake of the Woods coming up at home. Uh, we had planned to have that one on the uh, air on Monday night, but there's a there's a little football game going on on Monday night, uh, and a team in purple that we, we, we always have to broadcast, so we, we, we couldn't do that, which which is okay, I guess. We'll, we'll deal with what we got to deal with. Oh, before we move on to that, I want to go back. We, we talked a little bit about you. I want to talk about the Big Fork match a little bit more. Of course, that's kind of the big rival. Big Fork has been, we talked about this, building for the last couple of years. Talk about... You guys drop it in four sets, but talk about a little bit about Emily, about how that match went for you guys, and that the fact that you guys made a big comeback in set two, but fell short and took a set from them. What, what does that say about your team? Um, well, the first set was not. Was the first set? <laughs> the first set was not good, um, and then the second set we started off pretty slow, and I think we were down nine to twenty-two. Uh, then we got on a run of serves, and I think it was either tied or we were down by one, and then it was just back and forth for. I don't even know how many points, like six points, and then we fell 28-26. Um, and then I think we really took the momentum from that game for the third match, which was very, very exciting. Um, I think, I mean, it just shows that we can play when we're mentally in there. Like Danica said earlier, volleyball is really a mental game. Um, yeah, so. Emily was the one who had the run of serves. <laughs> I was going to ask, who had the run of serves? Of course she would remember that she yeah. So, well, that's, that's great. All right, let's, let's move on to Lake of the Woods. What, do we know anything about Lake of the Woods, Danica? What, I, do you guys get a chance to see them during the summer, or, or, or is this a team that you don't know a whole bunch about? Um, we definitely know this team. Um, they have a really good middle hitter. They've lost a few girls, so we don't know what we're going to expect. 
Um, but we're definitely going to work our hardest and see what we'll bring. <laughs> so then having a big middle hitter should make you very excited about playing on Monday night, right? Yes, now? for sure. Um, her name is Marissa Johnson. She's a junior, I think. She's always been an incredible volleyball player. I remember playing her in, like, sixth grade, and we were all terrified because she could overhand swing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, she's a very good player, and uh, but that's always had a really good program. So we need to be ready to come out with fire and energy, and I, I think I think we will. Well, I'll say this: after the, after the JV match on on Tuesday night against Ely, uh, that was the most excited I've ever seen two varsity teams watching a JV <laughs> match that, that went 21-19 in the third set. You know, you only played 15 in the in the third set in JV, and you guys were out there screaming and yelling, and Ely was out there screaming and yelling, and the, the, there was a lot of excitement. So I, I thought you guys should have been pretty jazzed up, but maybe that 20 minute one. But maybe maybe took that out of you, Coach. What uh, after uh, Lake of the Woods? What's coming up? I know you guys are going to Crosby for a tournament on Saturday. What else is happening? We have a crazy busy week next week. We play um, Lake of the Woods on Monday, and then we have two out of town matches. Tuesday we go to Northeast Range. Uh -huh. Thursdays at Northwoods, and then we're in Crosby. So we have a, a busy busy stretch coming up next week. Um, I think we're ready for it, and we're gonna go in and. Is it something that you look forward to more games than more practices during the week? For and we, sure. And we yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'd rather play games. But with all those games on the road late in the week, is that is that all right too, though, with with, with all the travel? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would prefer them to be home games, sure. but I mean, it's all, it'll be all right. We all have away games, so. No, I was eavesdropping on you guys. Did you say that you guys only have four matches in October? Did I hear that right, Coach? We do. We um, Our schedule switched up a little bit because of some scheduling conflicts. So we have a situation where we play a few at the beginning of October, and then we have a pretty long stretch before our first playoff game. So I wish we had those games later, but it just didn't work out scheduling this year. So we'll just have to come up with other ways to stay focused and ready to go come playoff time. Se seems to me that this has been a, a, a pattern over the last couple of years. I know the Falls has run into the same thing. They play even before the MEA week, and then they, they almost don't play for, for two weeks. It, 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 maybe maybe you guys should, like, cancel a game in the middle of the season and play each other for a second time. Yeah, yeah that's And play, I'm like, play like that. MEA Tuesday yeah. or maybe MEA Thursday or something so, that, that, so, that, that, so that you guys could – can you, should, we, should I start the paperwork? That sounds, that sounds great. We, we'd be up for that for sure. Yeah, I, I think there's uh, the, the, there's definitely a, a, um, a disadvantage to having that time off between the end of the regular season and the playoffs being so long. Uh, obviously, I mentioned it, so I'm, I'll bring it up. The Broncos and the Vikings coming up on Thursday the 21st. I want to make – oh, jeez. Yeah, right on. Right, but you've got it circled in and you're ready to go. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. it, it what, is, what is it, obviously, the obviously proximity, but is it mostly just because you know the girls so well that, that makes it so big? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what's the key? What, you guys know each other so well. There's really no secrets, Danica. So what, what, what's the key? Is it just really come down to execution? Like how we like it? Yeah, what is, what is the um, key for, for the Vikings to beat the Broncos? What, what, is, what is the it's, key? It's I mean, because you, you really can't hide anything. We know Emily's tall, and we know they're going to go in the middle, and blah. we know everything, right? You guys yeah. watch each other. They come watch your matches. You go watch their matches. There's nothing that you guys don't know about, so does it really just come down to the team that executes? Yeah, I mean... It kind of sucks going to Thanksgiving and having your cousin tell you <laughs> break about them beating you or vice versa, <laughs> like, you know, but I mean, it's really fun because, I mean, you do know each other and yeah. it's, it's really competitive and it's a big game for the season. It's always very competitive, but at the end of the day, we all know that yes, we're friends yes. and we all, yeah. Yeah, we can shake hands and we can go on. Ladies, thanks for coming up this morning. I appreciate your time. Good luck uh, this coming week with your busy week, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys come October. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Head Coach Kim Wimmer, Emily Franz, and Danica Clemenson joining me here. We'll take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk Broncos, girls, swimming, and diving. You're listening to Coach's Corner live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Welcome back to Hardy's for our third segment, and I'm joined by Stuart, is this your first time? Yes, it is my first time. Go ahead and hold that baby. Yes, it is yes, my first time. Yes, it is my first time. <laughs> Hedlund, this, this isn't your first time, is it? Yeah, it, it is. is. <laughs> Two first timers this morning, Morgan Hedlund and Amelia Stewart, joining me here from the Broncos girls swimming team. No diver this morning. We were supposed to have a diver, but she, she got caught up at work. She I guess. got caught up at work. Oh, 
Natalie here just was supposed to join us, but what we'll, we'll, we'll make, we'll make do, we'll, you guys will tell me all about diving because you guys are experts in that as well, right? Yeah. No, so much. Not, no, not so much. <laughs> Amelia Stewart, uh, you got two captains here, two junior captains. Amelia, we'll start with you. Uh, uh, meet on Thursday at your favorite pool in the whole world. Talk a little bit about how the meet went at Eveleth Gilbert on Thursday. Um, we did really well, considering that we only swim in that pool like once every two years, and how small it is in the double gutter. So we did really well. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> let, 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 why is it small? What do you mean? We swim in 25-yard pools, and their pool is a 20-yard pool. And is it narrow? You, you, and poor, poor Morgan was talking <laughs> about how she, when she was swimming, she was going to be hitting the lane markers, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> the lanes are much. Well, <laughs> you're going to go straight, Morgan. You can't be. No, it was. Fun. I was going to be flying. I took and a forth. stroke, and like my one hand hit the lane, the other hit the wall, and it was a disaster. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Okay, explain the double gutter to me because this is this is. Morgan's been complaining about all week in class about the double gutter. The double gutter. Morgan, explain the double gutter to me. It's hard if you can't see my hands moving. But On the radio, we cannot see your hands moving. I agree. It's yeah. like the wall is here, and then there's like a space, and then there's like a gutter, and then there's another space, and then it's the rest of the wall. So when you're flipping, your foot gets like in between the gutter and the wall. Because like where your feet should be, like on our there's pool, it's just the wall. But there, it's like a gutter. gutter. Yeah. That makes sense to me now. I, I, I've i got a picture. So, uh so we don't like the pool. It's too short. It's too narrow. It's got a double gutter. But you said things went fairly well. What well, went well? Um. Well, we had some pretty good swims and some good times. So. Uh, to me, what I noticed, and, and again, I got a first place in diving with uh, with Whitney Gwynn uh, taking first place there. But no other first places in any of the swimming events. But a ton of second and third places. That that had to make Coach Joe happy, Morgan. Yeah. Well, first place was like four points, second and third are three and one, so it makes up if you don't get sure. first, yeah. It's, is there, what, how does it differ swimming in a 20-yard pool versus the 25-yard pool is, does it, does it, yeah, it, mess it eventually you? messes you up. Well, a 50 turns into a 60, so or you're doing an extra flip turn, or you're doing like, it's just, it messes with your head. And a hundred's like five flip turns, and you end on the wrong side of the pool. Yeah, we were doing the 400 okay. relay, and if you started on the block, you end at the other wall. The poor girls had to jump over you at the shallow end, and... Which is illegal. Which is illegal, but, yeah. we, did, but we did it anyway, right, is the thing. But does... So we have those those things. Does it mess with you mentally while you're swimming down the while you're swimming down the lane? That all of a sudden you're thinking, well, I got like ten yards to go, but you've only got five yards to go. Do you have to consciously yeah. think about that the wall's coming sooner? Yeah, I was doing fly. I only had to take like five strokes because I just dolphin half the pool and then was at the other sure. end. <laughs> so what events are you swimming in mainly this uh, this season, Amelia? If you had your choices, we know Coach Jill has other ideas sometimes. <laughs> Um, I swim the freestyle in the medley relay, the 50 free, the 100 free, and the 200 free relay. So, so you don't like any of those specialty strokes is what I'm hearing. Jill likes me in butterfly, but that's not really, she doesn't do that a lot. I'm not that's good at sustaining it. That's because Morgan's the butterfly. Yeah, right? Morgan's the flyer, and I agree. <laughs> what events are you at, Morgan? Um, it is different every swim meet. Okay. Jill just puts me in whatever she feels like that day. <laughs> so, so, okay, what would you prefer to swim in? Pick, pick four swimming um, events that you'd like to be in. Don't mind the 200 I am. The okay. 200 free is not that bad. Um, I like the relays. I don't like the 500. But butterfly is not too bad it, either. It, <laughs> is there anybody out there who likes the 500 free? I no. don't think so. <laughs> Lindsay? No. Lindsay, I don't think. I think Lindsay might like it. I think she's afraid to admit it because she knows everybody else doesn't like it. But after she won against Hibbing yeah. uh, at the home meet here uh, last week, uh, she seemed to th seemed to be positive. Maybe that's because she got first place. Yeah. So let, let's let's talk about the team. What you guys are, are small in numbers. There's not a lot of you guys out there at the varsity level. So what does that do as a team? What is that? There's really no, there's really no time to take uh, any race off. Everybody's got to swim four, four events, correct, Amelia? Yeah, um, we're a really small team and we're a really young team, so it's really hard for Jill to put together 
a, like a whole meet and to win the meet because we're so young. So we're having a lot of really good girls come out of seventh grade, like really show how they're doing. Like Shay Manas is really good. And, and Harper Amda. Harper Amda is really good. And all the little girls are really good this year. They're really stepping up and t yeah. coming up forward, coming forward. You, you, you guys stole my next question because I was going to ask who's who's coming up. So you, so we got Harper and I'm sorry, I'm Shay Manasa. Shay Manasa. Who else, is anybody else out there that uh, that, that, that you, you're watching at and you're saying, hey, the, 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 this girl, maybe only a seventh or eighth grader, maybe a ninth grader now, but well, can I see some potential coming in the next couple of years? Well, Haven Pelland, she went to section finals as a seventh grader, so she's going to be something big when she. Well, probably this year, and yeah. Gracie Bowles has and really been coming Chris forward. Until the really, really up. all the seventh and eighth graders are coming up. So we're we're, we're excited about the future. Uh, what we, what, what's coming up next for the uh, for the girls' swim team? Who's uh, who's coming down the road? What's happening? Uh, we'll go to Chisholm on Tuesday. We'll go to Chisholm on Tuesday. Is that another twenty yard? Play? Yeah, it's another twenty yards. Twenty yards. No been, double gutters though. No double gutters. Life's good. People, I'm I'm going to ask for you to help me and, and pray for me a little bit at home this week because all I'm going to hear about for the next two days in <laughs> class is oh the twenty yard pool right and it's after too and so. after yeah. The day after, I'm going to have to listen to how poor it was and how bad it was and, and how dark it was at the Chisholm. Oh, no, Chisholm's Chisholm, Chisholm, oh, Chisholm right. Cool. Oh, okay. Elwood <laughs> is dark. Elwood yeah, is dark. dark. Okay, so. Uh, okay, what's after Chisholm? I think there's a, a meet, an invitational coming up at Hibbing yeah. Saturday? Yeah, yeah, we have a Hib Hibbing invites on Saturday. So you go into these big invitationals, there's 10, 11 teams there. Does it get does it get a little crazy? Does it kind of mess with your psyche, Morgan? Because you, you go swim a dual meet and it seems like you know things are progressing. Now you go to these invites and they're five hours long. Right? I like them better. You have more time to prepare for your race. You're not as tired because sometimes I have to swim the 500. I got the 200 free relay right after. You're exhausted. So it's kind of nice to have a break in between each thing. You agree uh, with that, Amelia? No, I feel the opposite way. <laughs> I hate uh, invitationals. They, they mess with me. I get so freaked out because I see who I'm swimming against, and I know that like the best people in the section are there, and I need to try to beat them. But then I like mentally overdo it, and then I freak myself out, and I don't do as well as I feel I would do at a dual meet. So, so if we put like 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 the horses in the big races, they got those blinders on so they can't see who uh, the other horses. Should, should we come that up might with, help. With, with that? That help? might help. <laughs> Who, who's coming up uh, in the dual meets? What's what's the next home dual meet? You guys know off the uh, top of your head? Not off the top of my head. Let's see. Let's look at the schedule. At Virginia on the 19th. At home against Masabi East on the 21st. Ooh. Talk, yeah. talk about Masabi East. That's it, they're, they're seem, good. <laughs> they're good. Uh, yeah. But it seems it, it seems to be one of the teams that we compete against, but we like competing against them. There seems to be a camaraderie. Am I agreeing with that? Or is that the old the old days, uh, and that's gone now, and now it's very competitive? Very competitive. It used to be like a, we'd go back and forth. We'd win by one point. They'd win by one point. It would be kind of fun like that. But now that we've lost, like Claire and Emily, like all of our big, big swimmers, it's going to be a lot more Masabi's probably going to win, and... It's just a matter of by how much and how well we do now. It's not really a trying to win. It's a trying to make our team better. It, is it, is, does it come down to a numbers game against a team like Masab East and Hibbing, who you, you took on uh, at home a couple weeks ago? Is it just the fact that they're going to have three swimmers in every event? They're going to have three relays possibly in every in every relay. Does it really come down to that? As far as the team score, I mean, uh, that, that is kind of the difference, right, Morgan? Yeah, they just have so many girls. It's just, like, hard to compete with them, especially when we lost everyone. We have a lot smaller team now. What are the expectations individually for you guys this season heading towards November and towards the section meet? Where do you guys see yourself uh, sitting uh, when you get when we get to day one of the of the section uh, swim meet and then of course to day two. But where, where do you want to be? What do you hope to be? Where where do you see yourself? Like us as a team, no, you, you individually. Um, I know I would love to make it to state, but the odds of it happening are kind of small. But I would love to make it there. So maybe finishing like fifth or like fourth or fifth in our section would make me very happy. 
Morgan, how about you? It's kind of hard to see where I'll be since I never know like what yeah. I'm swimming. I don't really know what my main stroke is. I just kind of swim everything. But hoping to make it to finals and do we'll, pretty good. Well, we'll, we'll by maybe like by the 1st of October, we'll that start to get into shape and, and, you know, and coach will kind of narrow it down. I know there's always there's always that meet when you when you might try that one different event or you have a little bit of fun and kids swim in different meets but or, uh, events excuse me but do you think coach will kind of finally say hey I, I really want you to focus in on maybe these two races these are going to be the ones that, that we're going to keep you thinking about towards sections. Yeah last year the first month I swam like every event last year I swam every event in a meet so it was kind of all over the place but towards the end of the year I was really doing the 200 IM and the 500. Who's got a chance to make it to state this year from this team? Is, that, is there an event? Uh, I know Lindsay Lucy had yeah. a couple, couple Lindsay of couple, Lucy. Has, had a couple of wins uh, against Hibbing, and Hibbing set three pool records that day. So I know that they they're pretty pretty talented. But where where where, where can this team get? Where are the individuals besides Lindsay? And what events are we talking about with Lindsay? And who else has a chance to make it to state? Um, I believe Lindsay Lucy will make it in probably the 500. Her IM is also looking really good, but I don't know how other people's IMs are looking. Sure. But her 500s were looking really good. And I personally feel like Natalie and Whitney might have a chance. In diving, correct? In diving, yes, we, in we, diving. we said we were going to talk about diving. We really haven't yeah. talked about that. Uh, we, Natalie heard uh, us, and of course Whitney Gwynn, and then of course we talked about Harper Rondal earlier. Are those the only three divers? Those are our three divers. Yep. It, 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 it's, it's always... <laughs> It's. I'm just gonna say, people. It's tough to. It's tough to go diving. I. I. I don't know who was tougher for her at Harper's first meet. I was. I was watching mom, dad, grandpa, and grandma behind me, and they're all like. <laughs> yeah. And I think Harper went out there and, and as a seventh grader. Seventh grader, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I did an outstanding job. Um, where was I going with my final thought? Anybody else for sections? Uh, that's where I was at. Anybody else that or that can make a chance to go to state? I, I don't know. I maybe cut you guys off. I'm not really sure. I think. We'll see more in the season once we start practicing more and going to more meets and see the other competition that we have. Well, ladies, thanks for coming in. You got to get back to work. You got to yeah. get back to work. <laughs> yeah, well, I have work today. Yeah. Oh. Well, you guys enjoy your day working. Get that homework done. I know it's a it's a oh, very important it's thing. Gonna be tough. I, I would appreciate that uh, getting that done as well over the weekend. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Amelia Stewart and Morgan Hedlund joining me here. We'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll wrap it up here from Hardy's. You're listening to Coach's Corner live on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Yeah. And welcome back to Coach's Corner for our final segment here. And uh, again, thanks to my guests from the uh, Little Fork Big Falls Vikings volleyball team, head coach Kim Wimmer, Emily friends and Danica Clemenson and of course from the uh, Bronco swimming team just joining me here Amelia Stewart and Morgan Hedlund let's uh, talk about the week that was let's go back to Tuesday as there was nothing that went on uh, Saturday Sunday Monday locally the International Falls Broncos were at home they took on Masabi East and they came away with a very convincing three set win 25-15 25-11 25-12 Tia Goulet uh, the libero she had 12 digs out of the back row Bianca Carlson 27 set assists a couple of ace blocks Jenna Sullivan 8 kills two blocks three ace serves emma gilbert five kills and a uh, big night there for the broncos as they uh, move to four and oh on the season also on tuesday night in a match that was heard on k104 uh the uh, little fork big falls vikings lost to ely in four sets 25 20 18 25 25 13 and 25 17 danica clemenson had 14 set assists seven digs two blocks emily franz had six kills four ace serves danielle pekarski three blocks and anna im 13 digs in the back row. On Wednesday, the Rainy River Community College Voyagers volleyball team, they were at home taking on Fond du Lac, a very convincing win for them, 25-19, 25-14, and 25-17. Elle Wilform, she had six kills and two blocks. Carly Phillips, six kills and 17 set assists to go along with eight digs. And Allison Sat uh, Satri, excuse me, had 13 digs, the libero for the Voyagers. On Thursday, the Bronco girls swimming and uh, diving team went on the road to face Everett Gilbert. 
The Broncos got first place from Whitney Gwynn in diving, but the Golden Bears took first place in all 11 swimming events. Uh, the Broncos kept the score close. They had 10 seconds. They had eight third places, so that's a very good showing there, but the Broncos were able to stay close, but lost in the team score by a final score of 55-46. to 46. The Broncos cross-country teams opened their season. Last team in the area to open their season. They traveled out to Roseau on Thursday afternoon, and the boys got a great start for them as they win with 39 points to out-distance Everett, uh, excuse me, to out-distance East Grand Forks with 49 points. Roseau had 69. Individually for the Broncos, Justin Besh took fifth, John Kalman sixth, Hunter Wilson eighth, Jake Erickson ninth, and Joe Glowack eleventh. Take up those places, you add them all up, you get 39. That was the score for the uh, Broncos. The girls only had uh, three girls run the varsity. Avery Savonin takes eighth, Rachel Anderson 21st, and Melissa Showquist took 27th. Got to have five runners to have a team score, so uh, the girls are not having a team score in their meet on Thursday. The Old Fort Big Falls Vikings volleyball team was in Big Fork on Thursday. We mentioned that they lost in four sets. 25-13, 28-26, 19-25, 25-19. Danica Clemenson had 15 set assists. Emily Franz, 10 kills. Danielle Pekarski, 6 blocks for the Vikings. Again, we talked about them trailing 22-9 to in, uh, in that uh, second set. Came all the way back to tie it, but ended up losing 28-26. Last night in uh, area football games, the Broncos uh, had a 6-0 lead at halftime. Lose to Aiken by a final score of 15-6 to in the Little Fort Big Falls Vikings. Vikings lose to Kelly or North home by a final score of 60 to 8. Again, what's going on locally today? The International Falls Bronco volleyball team down in Coleraine for a nine-team uh, round not a round robin tournament, nine-team tournament that they'll be taking part in. They play Cherry at 10:45. They play Ely at noon. I'll have updates on Facebook and Twitter. So please follow along there as I try to keep uh, the uh, scores updated there. They also play two more matches later in the day. The Rainy River Volleyball team already underway as they are down in the cities for three matches at Anoka Ramsey and the Rainy River Baseball team will have their uh, baseball team will have their uh, alumni game today at noon at Sheila Field. Monday big uh, day locally the uh, Bronco Volleyball team will be at home against Ely. The Viking Volleyball team will be home against Lake of the Woods and the cross country teams will head west again as they'll be at Warwood for a 430 match. Of course the Minnesota Vikings playing Monday night in their their season opener against former Viking Adrian Peterson and the New Orleans Saints. On Tuesday, the Bronco Girls Swimming and Diving Team heads to Chisholm for a 4.30 meet, and the Vikings Volleyball Team is in Babbitt to take on Northeast Range. Wednesday, Rainy River Volleyball heads down to the range. They take on Hibbing Community College. Thursday, the Bronco Volleyball Team will be at Virginia. Ought to be a dandy test for the Broncos there. Very interesting to see how things will go there. The Little Fork Big Falls Vikings Volleyball Team will be at Northwoods, and the Cross Country Teams, after going to uh, War Road on Monday, they'll be down at Everett Gilbert for a 3.30 meet. A little bit bigger meet there. Things get started a little bit early at the uh, Everett uh, Golf Course. That meet gets started at 3.30. Next, fr <coughs> excuse me, next Friday, Rainy River Volleyball will be at home on Friday night against uh, Itasca at 6.30. The uh, Vikings uh, football team, they'll be on the road at McGregor. I, I remember going to a, a, a regular season game, I think about seven years ago at McGregor, and uh, that was a dandy game uh, back then, and the uh, Vikings head back to McGregor, I think for the first time since then, and the Bronco football team, they'll be on the road at Moose Lake Willow River for a 7 o'clock game. George Frank and I will be down there, 6.40 pregame on K104 and rjbroadcasting.com as the Broncos take on the Rebels for the first time since 2004, and uh, if you uh, remember that 2004 game, very, very exciting game. Broncos uh, made a uh, made a good uh, good effort in that game uh, to give Moose Lake Willow River one of their last losses on their home field. Uh, just just a little trivia for you there. Next Saturday, we already mentioned that the Bronco Girls Swimming and Diving Team will have their first invitation of the year. They'll be down in Hibbing. The divers at 9 o'clock. The swimming begins at 1 o'clock. And the Little Fork Volleyball Team will be on the road as they will be going to Crosby Arrington for a meet there. That is going to wrap it up for Coach's Corner this week. Thanks to Ryan back at the station for pushing all the buttons. Thanks to everybody here at Hardy's for taking care of our guests. But most of all, thank you for listening to Coach's Corner. Live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com.